record. So as I start the recording, usually something jumps up on your screen. Uh, you have to click OK or got it, clear it out of your way. And then uh, here we go. So the setup is pretty important for the flow of the class. So you want to have one chair on this side with that back of chair facing in. Another uh, identical chair if you can with a high with a high back because again what we use these for is the the stability and the safety during the uh, practice. Mm -hmm. So you have two chairs. You have a decent amount of space here. That might be like five feet, four feet, something like that. Some space, so it's not too narrow. And then you have your third chair that is for sitting. And then you sit. And so you sit back from these, these chairs, so they're out in front of you. And if you take the time to set everything up this way, then every exercise that we do flows really nicely, and we just kind of get into this uh, flow of the practice. So take, uh, take a moment, get that done. And, uh, and then when you're ready, you have a seat and scoot to the front edge of your chair. Hands resting on the thighs, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Crown of head uh, at the top here and uh, having it aligned right above the, what they call the perineum, right? Which is the bottom end. So they talk about this in, in the energetics of the body, kind of like a battery. Top is like the positive end of the battery. Bottom under here is like the negative end, and we align those two points. And the hands resting on the legs. And we do a little breathing just to get going. So in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Right, so you're sitting in your chair, two chairs here, and we go from there. So Moshe, I see you standing there. Uh, are you okay? Are you uh, yeah? Are you able to get set up like I just described? I'm missing the middle chair. So you don't have a chair to sit in. No. Do you have anything that could act as a chair? Something. I I will try to find. Okay. So uh, again, if you got that set up, then. Breathing in, breathing out. Eyes can be closed. They can be open. Eyes closed is often helpful. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody here so we can get going. Um, yeah, eyes closed can be helpful in the beginning of your practice, even if it's just for maybe the first 10 breaths or so, because it... cuts off the distraction. There's often this sort of distracting bit of the eyes shooting out. And so just taking a moment to bring back that attention, pour it in on your body, feel your structure, feel your tissue, feel your electricity, your liquids. And we're going in through the nose, out through the mouth. Again, we could spend, and I, I suggest you do spend five, ten minutes doing breath work. It's powerful work. It helps to calibrate <clears throat> the brain, nervous system, and body. It induces some of the effects that we want. When we breathe long, smooth, and full, there's layers of tension in the body we don't even know are there. We've grown so accustomed to it, and I'd say that's even more so with Parkinson's. There's like this layer of, of action and tension that needs to just be let go of and relax and release. But that's difficult to do just by thinking it. And so instead we take our mind and uh, attune it to the breathing and then we tell this inhale to go long and full. 
And then this exhale to go long and empty. And then we do that again and again and again. And what happens is that creates, that induces this change of ah, this release through the whole body. Also entrains your attention, what the Taoists call the E. The E is your conscious intent, your ability to choose, your ability to direct the mind, right? The mind can be scattered and distracted, or it can be settled and consolidated. And so every breath that you take, long, smooth in, that's your mind being present, present, present. And then every exhale, long and smooth and out. That's your mind being present, present, present the whole time. So it's like weight lifting for the attention to just do breath in, holding, breath out, hold. So let's just do seven more. Try to have each one be absolutely 100% conscious, meaning you're just watching it the whole time, in through the nose, all the way, all the way, you're present till the top of that inhale, you hold it for a little bit, when it starts to exhale, you're conscious, you're attentive, all the way to the empty, all the way out, at the bottom of the exhale, don't inhale right away, just kind of pause in between, and inhale again, sort of hypnotizing ourselves into this present moment state. Many ways and reasons why our mind is, is distracted, but there's really only one state of presence. A couple more breaths, long, smooth, and full. We're just going to do a minimal joint mobilization practice before standing up. So first exercise, slide your hands and elbows and shoulder blades back. Lift your chest and chin. Arch the back. So you have 24 vertebra, each of which you want to give a little bit of extension. <clears throat> and then slide your hands forward past your knees. Hollow the chest. Drop the head rounding the back, that spinal flexion. We're going to do that three more times. Inhaling as you slide hands back, elbows, shoulder blades, chest up, chin up, arch the back. Exhale, sliding hands forward, hollow the chest, drop the head. Two more. Inhale. And exhale. And we come back to this neutral position, and we go left hand forward past the knee, right hand and elbow back as you turn to your right. And then we switch, right hand forward, left hand back, turn. <clears throat> and switch again. So we're moving the parts, the component parts of the body Gently, but thoroughly. So what you know we can observe, but the Taoists, uh, the, the Chinese medicine folk observed early on, thousands and thousands of years ago, was that when we age, what happens is we get stuck. Things start to glue together. Things start to become rigid. 
or collapsed. <clears throat> and so all the practices have this idea of, hey, be relaxed and gentle, but thorough. Doesn't mean yank on the body and force it. It just means go to the edge, return all the way through, go to the edge, and promote the opposite of that stuck, glued, collapsed state. Come back to middle. Hang your arms. So same idea here. We're just leaning softly. Lift your left wrist right close in front. Notice I didn't swing my arm way out here. I just floated it right up in front, close to the chest, and then switch. So back to the middle, and then this lean. Now this wrist floats up, and this floating of the wrist is just to allow us maybe a little more freedom to lean and tip that way. And then we come back to middle and lean. <clears throat> Find that loose quality. We want to stay within our comfort zone and then gently bump up against the edge of the comfort zone so that you can feel safe, but yet you're not so cautious and safe that you allow this, this uh, narrowing process to happen. So the practice needs to push up against where we're becoming a little bit too, you could say, comfortable. Um, we're just gently pushing that boundary out. Let's come back to middle. And then the last... Uh, thing we'll do with our upper body, shoulder blades, shrug up and down, shrug up and down, shrug up and down. Now, forward, up, back, down, really important. It's a place where we get stuck, where we hold. Forward and up, back, down, under. Forward and up, back and down. One more. Scapular range of motion, shoulder blades. And then we go the other way. Back and up, forward, down under, back and up, over top, forward, down, again, back and up, over top, forward and down, last one, back, up, forward and down, and loose, and then before we stand, let's just do a couple things with the legs and hips, so we go, Lift this knee and pull the heel somewhat in, sort of like a spring loading, and then push away so you have totally straight leg, and then reload, and then set that foot down, switch, load, push, load, down, switch, load, push, load, down, switch, load, and push, Load down, and then we do the foot and ankle. Straighten the right leg. Now point foot, flex foot a few times. And then tilt the foot a little in, out, in, out, in, out. And then finally circle. So that's the whole movement together, that thorough circle of the foot. And then reverse, circle the other way. And switch, other foot, point and flex. Then tilt that foot a little bit in, out, in, out. And then circle. And reverse circle. And down. And last thing before we stand up, scoot again, front edge of your chair if you're not there yet. From the hips, hinge. Now really notice here that when I'm folding, I'm not rounding my spine. So I am folding right where the 
pelvis meets the leg bones. That junction is also where I tip back a little bit from. And then sit upright. And then fold from. And then sit upright. And lean back a little bit. So this junction here, very important junction. And now from standing, we're gonna stand up. I mean, from sitting, we're gonna stand up. Loose shoulders, right? Slide your feet back. Now from that junction, just watch me do this first. Notice how the thing that happens when I stand up is not a forcing up, but a spilling forward. So now I'm no longer sitting in my chair and then pushing down and the body just launches up but we want to stay relaxed and loose through all the layers of the body and let what they call in Tai Chi practice, chun one, chun one, which means the, that which is dense goes down and out of the body rather than we come up and we hold that density. We let it go out. We keep that density out of the body so that this movement is just free and easy and loose. And so a simple way to think of it, as my, my teacher said it to me, it just kind of changed how I think altogether. The human body is primarily a hydraulic system. That's its primary use or primary power system with a backup system of tension and levers. So there are times when tension and levers can be protective and useful but if we're using that for everything we do, then we're just adding layers of tension and holding it in the body. So try to use the hydraulic system. Just stay relaxed. And notice, especially as you practice more and more, you go, they're right. He is correct that this body could and really should be used as a hydraulic system primarily. And then the more you train the body mechanism movements, or the Shen Fa, the more you train those in the hydraulic state, the more you can do with your hydraulic system. So that's kind of what we're doing in the Tai Chi practice all, all together, is in a simple way going, okay, I have a hydraulic system, I probably haven't trained it, so now we're going to train it, because that's the one that can last for us long term. Now, you guys just stay as you are. I moved that chair because I have somewhat limited space. But please keep your sitting chair exactly where it is. Do not move your sitting chair. Put your sitting chair back where it was because if you lose your balance and you need somewhere to sit, it's probably a good idea to have that, right? So now you've got this chair over here to your right. Move closer to that chair, but make sure you're slightly behind that chair rather than up in front of it or right in the middle of it, be a little behind so you can touch it uh, and it's right there. Now, first exercise, drop your arms, no, no hand on anything if you can manage it. And just if you look at my body for a moment and <clears throat> if I were to ask you, okay, which leg am I putting my body weight into right now? Is it this one or is it this one? You can probably see it's this one, right? but it has nothing to do with me pulling this foot off the ground. This foot is still on the ground. And then now when I change, okay, where's my body weight going? How am I using, uh, uh, which leg am I using to get my weight to the ground? You can see that it's changed here. And then you can see that it's changed here. So this is a very important exercise where you do not leave the floor. You don't hike up your hip. You don't pull up your foot. You don't do anything except from your middle, just with that hydraulic loose quality, you just rearrange the relationships so that this leg is doing the connecting to the ground. This one is empty. And then from that middle pivot, you make that change here. So this is the one I think is, again, it's, it's, not something you go to a party, it's not a party trick that you say, hey, look, look at what I'm doing. No one's going to be impressed. Maybe fellow Parkinson's people might. But, you know, you see what I mean. It's very easy to overlook this simple practice where nothing's really happening. We're not picking a foot up. We're not walking forward. We're not walking backwards. But what we are doing is what they call separating 
full and empty. Because most of you are probably doing something like 70-30 or maybe 80-20, but not quite 100-0. So you can see that this, for me, this is a zero. This is not even touching the ground with any weight. And then I can change, and I actually let this leg become truly 100. And so this leg has what they call Ching Ling, lightness and nimbleness. And so if there was one practice that you would, you would work on, maybe you have your cane or your walker even, but you just stay in place and you just try to get this differentiation between full and empty and then full and empty. And also, uh, some of you uh, report back pain when we start doing these exercises too much. This is a really good one for back pain. I just want to show something, is that notice if you're doing any kind of butt out while you're doing this exercise, that's going to jam right in this lower back. So it's a great one to practice this sacrum down and through. So I'm just changing. I'm making sure my butt's not going like this. I'm keeping that, uh, that good alignment, but what I'm also doing, which is really important, is I'm not locking the leg that I'm standing on. I'm not tightening the leg. I'm doing this hydraulic deal where it's softening this leg. You might be able to see it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can on the screen, but my leg isn't hardening. It's actually a little softer. It's got a little bit of give, like a spring. So please just dial this one into your head and, and have this be something you're doing a lot. So if you're sitting at home for a while and watching television or whatever you're doing, stand up and just stand in place and just 100 zero, 100 zero, and get that feeling. What you're also training is your middle, right? I'm pointing at my navel, my belly button. That's the place where the movement's coming from. It's not from up here or here, or here, that, uh, that, these areas are just along for the ride. They're just along for the ride. So I'm very relaxed, very loose, but I'm also moving from the correct pivot place in the middle. So again, if all you did was practice this, this would improve, this would give you upgrade in safety because you just have this freedom of movement uh, that's like organized organized freedom of movement. Now, let's take this exercise up a notch. You got your chair here. Change the weight to your left leg. Stay in the left leg. You got the right leg empty. Lift to the tippy toe. Right? Lift to the tippy toe. And then place the heel back down with no weight. From your middle, change. So now we've got 100 and 0, and it's the 0 leg that has mobility. It's because it is empty that it can move, right? Heel down, change. As you let the weight go down through this leg, this has more of that ching ling or lightness and nimbleness. So it's the chun one or the releasing or yielding of the weight down through the leg that gives this its potential freedom to do something, to step or walk or whatever. Now, take it up another level. Hand on the chair for this one. Put the, uh, let the weight go down through your left leg, get to the tippy toe on the right foot, and now disconnect it from the floor. So this really shows you, oh, I wasn't actually empty in this leg. The moment we actually pick the foot up, that's when we see the reality check and then place the foot all the way down empty from your middle, chain, tippy toe. Again, hand on chair for safety, disconnect from the floor, reconnect back to the floor with no body weight. That's another important piece. And then from your middle pivot, chain. The weight goes down through your left, which gives this the freedom to disconnect from the floor. Change. The weight goes down, which gives you the freedom for up. Keep it empty even as you place it to the ground. And then change. Tippy toe. Disconnect. Back to the floor. Whole foot. 
chin, tippy toe of the empty foot, disconnect, reconnect, whole foot, change. Now let's go to that final difficulty level. This one, please definitely have hand on chair. We go tippy toe, disconnect, and lift all the way up. And you'll note there's a point at which it doesn't go any higher. So there's a fully loaded leg, right? All the way up and in. And then it's got to be a softening and a lengthening to place the foot back down with no weight. Then from your middle, change. Tippy toe, disconnect, and lift. So use the chair so you can really blaze this trail of getting the leg all the way. I'll turn sideways so you can see. All the way in. Notice it's close. It's not way out here. It's in close. And then I just soften the leg long, place it back to the ground, change the weight into this leg. So once the weight's going down through, the emptiness of this leg allows it to be able to come up and go down with no problem. And then we change. Empty leg. It's the emptiness is what gives it the freedom of lift and the freedom of lower. And then from our comfortable middle pivot, we change. Up, down, change. Up, down, change. All right, now let's take the exercises to another uh, sort of new exercise here, starting back from low level beginning. So I'm going to turn slightly sideways. You don't change anything. You just keep facing forward, but I'm doing this so you can see some of the discrepancies and, and discernment between what my body's doing. So you got this chair in front of you and to your right. Put your weight in your left leg and put your right foot out in front, heel touching. So this is the, the start. We've got full, empty. Okay. Now, shift into that front leg and get to the tippy toe of your back foot. And then shift back and get to the tip of the heel. So now this adds complexity because we are moving forward in space and moving backwards in space. And so this causes a sort of a panic through the body when balance isn't with us. This moment we have to go from here to over there, there's this tension. But the saying in Tai Chi is the primary direction is always down. So even though I'm shifting into my back foot, I'm actually just going down. Same thing here. I'm not even going forward. I'm going down. And I move forward because of where my foot is. Or I move backwards because of where my foot is. But the yielding, relaxing is still just the same as the first exercise. Just down. Down, and it's that down emphasis that gives us the feeling of stability, is that we're not getting over our skis one way or the other. We're always just connected to the earth, connected to the earth, and we're never just rolling the dice and risking, right? Now, hand on the chair with your front foot empty from the hip, lift, lower, shift. Now your back foot should be empty like a little flamingo. Just bend the knee, touch the floor, shift. So now we're adding this challenge of saying, are you really empty? Right? You can see when I do it, nothing really goes into chaos. Shift. And I don't pull it up prematurely. I'm waiting. And then I go, okay, now it's empty. So I can just lift that. And then I got to change so that now this is stable. This is mobile. And then I change, and this is stable, and this is mobile. Right? Now we go for that final level where this mobile leg, we go up, down, shift. And now this back leg that's mobile goes forward and up, back, shift. The weight going down allows for the up. Down. Now the weight going down allows for this forward and up. And very importantly, the weight stays down through your front leg as you reach this foot back. 
So you don't let this pull you off your root. You stay rooted and find the earth. And then you transfer. So the idea is we're always as if, and, and in a way it's, it's materially real, that we're underground. We're connected underground like a plug in a socket. So I'm just changing now, plug in through this leg so that this one's free to move. And then I'm changing. I'm still plugged in. Now I'm just plugged in through this leg. Down. One more. Stay plugged in. Stay plugged in. And shift. Now we're going to switch sides. So take a little side step. Find your other chair. Remember, you don't change your angle. I change mine so you guys can see some of the angles. But you just face forward. Now pour the weight into your right leg. Put your left foot in front. Try to keep your uprightness. All right? And just shift. And remember, primary direction is down, not forward and backward. Forward and backward just happens, but effectively, I'm just going down to the earth. Down to the earth. Down to the earth. Remember this idea of hydraulics. What, is, what does a hydraulic movement feel like? Feels like letting go. Feels like releasing. Feels like dropping. Feels like melting. And at first, that feels kind of less stable and less controllable. But over time, we actually find, oh, you can do a lot in this state of loose and live and spacious. Let's go level two here. The hand on the chair. We go lift, lower, shift. Once the weight is down through this leg, then this other one can go bend at the knee, toe to the floor, shift. The weight going down through, lift, lower, shift. The term they have for uh, the state we don't want to be in is double weighted, which basically is like we're grabbing on muscularly the whole time in one state. We're just kind of holding and yanking on the body versus what we want is this feeling of change, like a seesaw, changing inside so that the freedom is here. And then this change happens so that the freedom is here. Rather than both the same the whole time, we're kind of Frankenstein walking. We're actually trying to soften so that there's this discernible pivoting seesawing, you might say, inside. Now, hand on chair, if it isn't, let's go all the way up, all the way down, and shift. Now this one, the leg comes forward and up, reach the toe behind, shift. Weight going down allows for this lift, and lower, and shift. And then this back leg going forward and up, toe reaching back, shift. Weight going down allows for this up, down, shift. Weight going down allows for this up, back, and shift. Now, let's go back to the first side. So, side step. Go chair to chair for safety as needed. Now, put your right foot in front, weights in your left. We go shift. Now, this back foot being empty, step it. And then shift. Now we're going to go backwards. Remember, you have your chair for safety. Shift. This front foot now being empty, take it behind you. Notice how mine is still empty, even though I've stepped it back. Then, shift. Same thing going forward. So this is empty. Now I make this full. This empty. This stays empty. And then the weight goes into it. Shift back. Full and empty discern. Step while still empty. And then full and empty discern. One more. 
shift step shift primary direction is still just down down now use your chair for safety to go lift lower shift now this back foot being empty step up over something so that's again we're now adding challenge to really show you what it feels like to be empty and full now change the weight here do that little flamingo and then shift back now this one tricky up bend and reach without any weight then shift lift lower shift as the weight's going down through your right leg the left foot's now free to step over something and then the weight goes down through the left leg so the right foot is free and then shift up tuck reach shift lift lower shift step over shift Last time, going back. Good. Now we're going to switch sides. Side step. Put the weight in your right leg, left foot in front. Level one, most casual. Just shift, step, shift. And then shift back. Step back, empty. Shift back. And then we go shift, step, shift. Shift back, step back, shift back. One more. Shift, step, shift. The middle is where we get our stability from. The relaxed body that reveals this middle pivot that can adapt and change. Hand on chair. We go lift, lower, shift. Now your back foot, step over something. And then shift. And then a little flamingo. Lift, lower, shift back. This leg being empty has all this mobility. And then shift. Lift, lower, shift. Step over, shift, flamingo, down, shift. You know, I'm feeling like I switched too soon and I forgot to do the third level on that side. I think I did. So we'll do it on this side and then we'll go back. So now this is lift, put the heel down softly, shift. Now it's this exaggerated heel, knee, foot, down. So it's that whole range. And then we shift. And now, very important, we go forward and up, reach the toe behind. Shift. So this is the, the most challenging part of this exercise is this tuck and reach while the weight stays down through this leg. And then you shift. So it's up, down, shift. And then it's this exaggerated movement with that empty leg. And then shift. Now this is full. This is empty. So this one can go up and back shift now all the weights down through your left so that this one is free to go through that full range and then let's switch sides one more time and do that level three on this side because i think i think i forgot so here we are put the weight in your left leg right foot in front so now we go up down shift and now this back leg, empty, can go bend the knee, knee to chest, foot out, down, and shift. 
And then we're going forward and up, back, shift. Now the most important part of the exercise right here, where we're going up, tuck, reach back, but stay through your front leg, then shift. So we go up, down, shift, in. and then heel, knee, foot, down, shift, in. and then forward and up. Last time, back, shift. Remember, down gives you this stability, and now, mm -hmm. Move to the left side of your space and then turn and face down range so you have a good long runway and you have your chairs on the, uh, to the left of you which act as a bit of a safety uh, emergency mechanism. Now, let's do level one walking, four, five, six steps that way. So we empty one foot, put it out there, it's empty. Then you go shift. Now you've got this change. One is full, the other is empty. Step the empty foot, still empty, and then we chain. Now that other foot should be empty, so it's got the freedom to move. Chain. Now the empty foot's there. Step it. Chain. Get good at being relaxed and letting all the weight go down through. You don't hold any of it in your body. You let it get down to the earth. Now, going backwards, be very careful, please. Make sure you know where your hand would go if you start to lose balance. Change the weight into your back leg. Wait and step the empty foot, keeping it empty, and then change. Note that the empty foot is the one that has the power to move. Move it, step it back, and then change. Now you've changed which one is your stable, which is your mobile, and step the mobile foot, and then change. Step back, change. We're going to do that again. Those of you that felt pretty comfortable with that, what, what eventually will happen is you just walk. You just go, okay. But you make sure that you're going empty full, empty full, empty full. And the place that that empty full change is happening is your middle pivot. They would say it's in your belly and lower back and groin hips, known as the quad. So it's that mechanism that we need to have freedom of movement at as you just go empty full, empty full, empty full, empty full. And let's do that again. And over time, once you key in on that mechanism being the mode by which you're moving, then, quote unquote, you could speed it up, but it should not feel like you are hurrying. Because the moment you hurry, you start to add tension. And then tension blocks the mechanism and then makes you more clumsy. Right? So the goal is stay in absolute ease, but then eventually you can sort of you can step on the gas, as they say, right? You can kind of pick up a little speed, move across the room. But there's a saying in Tai Chi, the mind always stays in the Dan Tien. So a way to think of that is the mind is always on this, this mechanism. That is the key. Like I'm saying, if I'm doing complicated Tai Chi, all this outside yada yada is based on this mechanism. It's just this mechanism doing different combinations of movement. So for our purpose, we're just, just kind of cruising across, relax. Let's just do that a couple more times. Maybe you start to feel comfortable. You put a little bit of a longer stride into it. Right? The emptier the foot, the more comfortable it is floating through space without pulling your body weight with it. So you don't feel clumsy, right? Whereas if I'm tight, and I take some big step, it, it's yanking my body along for the ride, versus here, my leg being free, I can take a big step and go, Pew. and the other important thing, especially when moving a little faster forwards and backwards, is remembering the primary direction is down. So even if I go, wah, wah, and I take these big strides, 
I'm still going down, 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 right? Okay, now turn and face forward, uh, or come to this far left side of your uh, space, facing forward, and then put the weight in your left leg, and right foot is empty. We go out, in. We're going to do that a few times, just going out and in. Now, most important part of this exercise is not letting, when you step the leg, your body center going with it. Clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. Notice what I'm doing. All my weight's here. So I've taken care of where I'm getting my stability so that this foot is free. So you look at the speed with which I can move it. It's not because I'm trying harder. It's because it's so empty that it's like, oh, well, no problem. So try to get that feeling here all the way through the left so that your right foot can go sideways out, sideways in, sideways out, sideways in. Okay, now put the right foot out. Leave it there. Leave both of your feet anchored to the ground, but now make this your full leg, this your empty leg, and then change back. So we're bringing our jong jung, our central pillar, through space, but not because I'm moving something up here. I'm actually doing nothing at all except from this mechanism going laterally. Laterally. So I'm using internal space, internal real estate, to move a good five, six, seven inches over here and a good five, six, seven inches over here. But for, for the most part, I'm not doing anything. No effort. Now, stay in your right leg. Bring the left foot in, out, in, out, in. So this really forces you to discern full, empty, because if this has any weight in it, trying to go fast like that, it's going to be clumsy versus swift, right? And then finally, bring that left foot all the way in, feet together, very important, as close together as you can. Can you now find full, empty, and then from your middle mechanism, change? Full, empty. And then from that middle mechanism, change. Full, empty. Change. So the most valuable real estate on the market, you cannot buy. You have to cultivate it. This interior mechanism that is all about space, all about subtle, small changes that when we get older, they become so stuck that all we can do is walk like this and, you know, the boat's about to tip over very easily. But if you can cultivate this internal change, then you can retain quite a lot of mobility and agility. Now stay in your left leg, right foot steps out, change, left foot steps in, change, right foot out, change, in. So this mechanism that we're training, right now we're only asking it to do something relatively simple, a lateral change of full and empty, right? But we're about to take it to another level. When we uh, do this a second time, we're going to add that rotational movement from our Friday class. Let's go back the way we came. So just get good at this little four-step deal. The change happens with no step. The step happens with no weight shift. The weight shift happens with no step. The step happens with no weight shift. So shift without stepping. Step without shifting, shift without stepping, step without shifting, change, step, change, step, change and step, 
change and step. Change, step. Now, before we, uh, so put the stepping move on the back burner for just a moment. Hands dipped into the water here. The bear washes paws in the stream. So shift into your right leg, turn from that same mechanism that I'm talking about. Turn and sweep the hands across. So this is what we work on <clears throat> in our Friday classes is the, the complexity of the sort of mechanism and its upper body choreography. But we add that here. Shift now to the left, turn and sweep the hands across. Hands turn around. We shift into the right leg, turn from that middle mechanism and let the hands wash through. Turn the hands. We shift, then turn, then brush and sweep. Turn the hands. Now, shift and turn, brush and sweep. Now, pausing here, notice your left foot should be empty. Bring it in. Keep the left foot in. Change your weight into the left leg. Turn, brush, sweep. Pause here. Your right leg should be empty. Step it out without shifting into it. Hands are turned and ready, and we go shift and turn and brush and sweep. Left foot is empty. Step it in. And shift and turn and brush and sweep. Step the right foot out. Shift, turn, brush, sweep. Left foot now empty is the stepping foot. Step it in. Shift and turn, brush and sweep. Right foot being empty is the stepping foot. Shift and turn, brush and sweep. Left foot empty, step it in. Shift and turn, brush and sweep. Primary direction is still just down. So I'm going down through one leg while turning, brushing and sweeping. Other foot is empty, I can step it, and I go down through that leg, shift and turn, brush and sweep. One more. And then bring left foot in and then back out, and we go that way. Shift, turn, brush, sweep. Right foot being empty, steps in. Shift, turn, brush, sweep. Step out. So it's all from this middle pivot. So we can get distracted by the outer body movement, but then as you learn the choreography and you say, oh yeah, okay, I know what we're doing now. So some of you, I know Moshe, today's your first day. So this is going to be a lot, right? But don't get too discouraged by that. Just remember you have to learn what it is that we're doing before it starts to have the ability to be practicing flow. So just do what you can this first time. Right? Those of you that know the movement, notice that since you know it, you can start to add the awareness of, are you hydraulic? Are you using grip and tension, or are you using saw and smooth? Let's go there and back again. Shift and turn, brush and sweep. Again, once you get somewhat comfortable with the what are we doing side, then really key in on, can you drop all effort out of the body? Slow it down enough that you can pay attention to this easing, easing, smooth, smooth, smooth. And also, Mike, notice one thing. I didn't really point it out, but... The hands are not just like this the whole time. They're changing. So one is facing this way, and this is brush knee, and this is sweep leg, right? And then they turn, right? So they change jobs. So when they're going back this way, it's brush knee, sweep the leg, and then they turn. And then it's brush knee, sweep leg, and then they turn, right? Shift and turn, brush, sweep, turn the hands. Shift and turn, brush, sweep, step. So this is your basic 
advanced Tai Chi right here. If you can get this feeling of easing down the road and turning and feeling fluidity and freedom of movement, and yet also you start to, like I was talking about the real estate, you're basically cultivating an interior space, groin, belly, low back, of fluidity and openness through the whole body that gives us the stability that we're looking for. So that's one of the main concerns, right? Is that, hey, when I stand up and I start walking, I don't feel stable. I don't feel like, I feel like I could fall down at any moment, right? That's at least happening for some of you, if not all of you. And so then you ask yourself, where are we looking for that stability? And the initial thought would be, well, I better get stronger and I better hold on more. That makes sense, except it's just not correct. Because of the fact that the body is actually a hydraulic system, because that's true, then what we actually have to look for that stability is total freedom of movement of all the parts opening up this internal mechanism from which we can control and adapt and move and change and shift and turn, that's the only place that we're going to find it. So the more we go for the tightening and holding, we're actually doing the opposite. We're uprooting ourselves from the ground. We're holding more density and weight in our body. So we're more clumsy, we're less grounded, and we're not moving. It's like we're trying to fly the ship not from the cockpit. Right? Not from the correct place. So let's do one more there and back and just have this idea that, again, now that you have the movement somewhat in your mind, okay, now what are you using this movement to accomplish? Changing of weight left and right, empty and full. Turning from this place, this middle pivot. And then also with the hands, so like Christopher, for instance, when you're doing it, your hands are almost like they're handcuffed together, right? So you're doing kind of like this, right? Notice what I'm doing. Ah, the elasticity, the, the flow this way. And then when I shift and turn, I'm not handcuffed. I'm letting them go and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. So they're elastic. They're fluid. And then I step in. But my middle is still being uh, organized, right? Even though I'm letting them go really far, far, far away, right? I'm not leaving here. I'm just cultivating elasticity or pliability, right? So when we're too tight, too controlled, we might be moving from our middle, but we're not opening. We're not peeling out the, the uh, compacted state. And so that's this importance of, okay, shift and turn and flow to the fingertips. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then they turn around and then shift and turn. And so that's where the value of this slowness of Tai Chi is, is that you have time to go, okay, let me make sure I really loosened and extended. And then I wash through... And I let them keep going a little bit and they extend, but I keep my middle and I step this footing because it's empty. Now we reverse, go the other way, shift and turn, brush and sweep. And then stepping in, shift and turn, brush and sweep. And stepping out and shift and turn, brush and sweep. And the saying is a Taoist loses something every day. So what are we gaining? What are we trying to achieve? We're trying to make sure our alignment is good. Uh, we're trying to not have any places that are not conscious. right? So you can think of that as gain. But in terms of what we're doing with the body, we're actually trying to let go to release somewhere that's stuck or tight. So it's either collapsed or glued or gripped. And so that's a, that's a yielding. That's a letting go of something that's there that is in the way. That's often difficult for the mind to wrap around as well.
and settle. And then we finish with this final little self-massage here. So hands together, rub your palms, rub the back of hand, palms, back of other hand, <clears throat> palms. Now the claw, this groin area on either side of the genital area, that groin crease, we go palms on it and go up, down, up, down. And then we go up to this little spot here, the hip flexors, right along the front crease, and come around the back to the tailbone, up onto the lumbar. And then like we're gonna do a sit in the chair, stick your butt back, sink, sweep the hands down the outside of the legs, around to the inside of the legs, and up the inside of the legs to the navel. And then let's do that again. Qua, or groin area hip flexors, tailbone, lower back, and then like you're sitting, but don't sit, but just sink the butt, slide the hands down the outside of the legs, around to the inside, up the inside to the belly button. Let's do that one more time. Qua, hip flexors, tail, lumbar, outer legs, inner legs, navel, and then lastly, yang channels, turn, yin channels, and off, turn, yang to the shoulder, turn the arm, come down the yin side, the inner side, and off, up, turn, down, up, turn, down. And switch. Up, turn, down, turn, up, turn. And then finally, this one's a little bit tricky, a little extra tip of the weight into the balls of the feet, stay in the balls of your feet just a little bit so your heels are lighter, and then lift the heels a little, lower the heels a little, lift and lower, lift and lower, lift and lower. So you can create this bounce. All right, so you're practicing sum, soft, pliable, and loose, and then you go heels up, down, up, down, up, down. And just look at my arms, notice what my arms are doing. I'm not holding my arms, I'm also not trying to move my arms. I'm just letting them be so relaxed that they make that movement. I couldn't make that movement if I tried. This little natural sort of blah, 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 that thing. So the whole body, we want to practice that looseness. And then shogun, wing, roll, fold, settle. Turn the hands in at the belly and then finish your practice by taking center palm on top of the belly and this hand over top. Three breaths here. And again, belly button, right? It's a very specific spot. So make sure your hand's on the belly button and the other hand on top. And then have no tension in the shoulders. Let go. Relax. And then this final hand mudra, representing yin and yang and the harmonization in the middle pivot, which is what we're cultivating. So thank you, everybody. All righty. Uh, any questions uh, of any kind, insights, feel free to unmute.